How's it going? This video is all about the sound reactive version of WLED. So I'm going to show you how to connect a microphone to a Dig Uno or a Dig Quad and how to install and set up the sound reactive version of WLED. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Here we go. During the Home Assistant Conference, when we had Air Cookie on, he's the guy who invented WLED. I noticed behind him that he had a cool looking light fixture. It looked like a thin rail with some RGB LEDs pointing up at the ceiling. It made a really nice looking glow up on the ceiling. I asked him about it and he said he's been meaning to put out something about how he made it. And I'd be very interested to see how he did it. But I just couldn't wait. So I took some things I had on hand and I made my own. You want to see how I did it? Of course you do. The trend I've seen in uh, neato light fixtures lately is to make the light as indirect as possible. We've seen lights built into alcoves or trim at the edge of the ceiling, behind TVs and computer monitors, and under shelves and desks. In all these situations, the LEDs are facing 90 to 180 degrees away from our eyes. And that makes sense because LEDs can be pretty spiky if you look directly at them. So the challenge then is to make a fixture that is either hidden or blends in with the room or that makes a cool shape so it becomes a bit of an artwork in itself. The fixture I'll be showing in this video certainly is not a work of art. It's just some aluminum channel I had laying around. But I'll show you how to connect a microphone to the world's greatest ever LED controller, the Dejuno, and how to get it working with the sound reactive version of the world's greatest LED software, WLED. My kids really love having colored LEDs all over the place. Recently, our daughter Zoe asked me to make her something with LEDs that would respond to her music. I showed her what Air Cookie had made, and she agreed it was cool enough to meet her needs. Phew! Okay, full disclosure, we literally put this whole thing together in about three hours one night between me getting home from work and everybody going to bed. Here's what we used. Six meters of WS2812 LEDs at 30 LEDs per meter. Six meters of straight aluminum channel some corner connectors, a 5 amp 5 volt power supply, a Dig Uno ESP32 based controller, a Max 4466 analog microphone, and some wire. The idea was just to put the aluminum channel in the shape of a rectangle, secure the corners and butt connections so it would keep its shape, lay the LED strip in the channel, and hang the whole thing from the ceiling. Sounds simple, right? It pretty much was. I liked the corner connectors I got, but I wish I had bought the pack that also came with some butt connectors. Since I didn't, I had to MacGyver something together. A small bit of metal and some sturdy clear packing tape did the trick. I told you at the beginning, this is not a work of art. The corner connectors came with some screws to secure them to the channeling, but that didn't seem sturdy enough. So after I got the LEDs laid in the channel, I put a ton of hot glue in the corners. It felt pretty firm after that. To get the LEDs around the corners, I just kind of bunched them up and bent the strip. Someone with more time and patience than I have would have either cut and soldered the corners or at least used some three conductor 90 degree clips. I've used those in the past and they work well. I had to splice in the last meter of LEDs because I needed six meters and the strips come in five meter lengths. Soldering the ends together isn't hard if you've had a little practice. If you don't want to do that, there are also LED butt end connectors that don't require soldering. Once the channel is together and the LED strips are in place, it's time to get the controller ready. For projects like this, the best controller is the Dejuno. You can get the Dejuno from my website if you're in the US or from Alnet China outside the US. The Uno comes with WLED software installed, but in this case, we want to use the sound reactive version. There are two ways to install a different or updated version of WLED. One way is to pull the white circuit board off the top, connect a USB-C cable to your computer, then go to install.wled.me. In the drop-down menu, there's an option to install the sound reactive version. Click install and select the device from the list. If you aren't sure which device it is, 
you can unplug it and plug it back in. The one on the list that disappears and reappears is the one you want. If you aren't seeing the device pop up on the list, follow the device not found link. Most likely you're missing the drivers and that link will show you where to get them. The other method is to install the new version of WLED over the air. Download the latest version from the GitHub page for SRWLED. I've gone over the OTA firmware update method before. Some folks didn't like that I sped that video up. It was an experiment. People didn't like it. I won't do it again. I'm sorry. When you have the SRWLED version installed, there are some settings we need to check and maybe adjust. Specific to the sound reactive version of WLED, we've got to tell it where the microphone is connected. The default mic pin is GPIO 36, which is also labeled A0. Just check the sound settings page to make sure that's what it says. The Max 4466 is an analog mic, so you can leave the enable digital mic box unchecked. After that, you do the regular WLED setup. Set the right number of LEDs, the Wi-Fi settings, name the device, make some presets, etc. Here's another video that covers most of that stuff. Time to wire up the Uno. This is the microphone that I like to use. It's the Max 4466. It's got three connections, so it's pretty simple. VCC is your voltage, ground, and then the output from the microphone that goes to the control. Typically when you buy these microphones, they don't have the little pins soldered onto them. That's not a big deal if you're okay soldering. If you don't like soldering, you can buy a pre-soldered version on drz.com. Now let's look at where we're going to connect it on the Uno. The pins we want to use are AO, which is this pin right here, 5 volts, which is the pin right next to AO, and then ground, which is this pin on the other row. Those are the three pins that you'll use to connect the Max 4466 microphone on the Dig Uno. What about the quad? Here's the quad. Pins are all labeled, same as on the Uno. AO is right here. It's this last pin in this row. The other two you'll need are 5 volts and ground. So here's my Max 4466 with the pins soldered on and some jumper wires. Positive is red, ground is white, and in this case output is yellow. So I connect output to AO, then ground, to ground, and 5 volts to 5 volts. And that's what it looks like connected. AO, ground, and 5 volts. Well, what about the Uno? There's AO, there's 5 volts, and there is ground. That's it. Next is the bench test. I always, always recommend testing before installing. It's not as important here as it is when you're putting up lights on the house but you'll still be kicking yourself if you get this beautiful fixture up and then try to turn on the lights and nothing happens or they flicker like crazy, which is even worse. So test it out before you hang it up. The aluminum channel came with a diffuser. Since the light will be so indirect, we probably didn't need the diffuser, but I used it mostly thinking it would keep the dust and whatever else from settling directly on the LED strip. To hang the fixture, we just used some wire. One end wrapped around the joints in the aluminum channel, the other twisted around some screws in the ceiling. Not terribly elegant, but it worked, and adjusting the distance from the ceiling was pretty easy. The trickiest part was getting the right distance between the fixture and the ceiling. Too close, and the individual dots are too distinct. Too far away, and the colors are all blended together, and it just looks like white light. We had to adjust the height a couple times until we got something that looked good. I'd say err on the side of being too close. Somewhere around 6 inches is probably best, but it all depends on what you like. And that's it. Not bad for a few hours work. I hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.